newly released schedules obtained by the Government Transparency Group American Oversight through a Freedom of Information Act request publicly reveal who Devos met with and consulted in her first six months on the job. Her office typically releases a listing of public events, but the schedules, from February 8 through July 19, delve much deeper, showing phone calls and meetings with individuals from Silicon Valley, politics and the business world. Here's what her schedule shows, school visits Devos's passion for school choice was mirrored in her selections for school visits during first months on the job. She visited 23 schools during her first four and a half months as education secretary. Among schools for children in grades K-12, she made appearances at five charter schools, four religious schools and eight public schools. Education Week's reporting on Devos's current school visits indicates that the secretary has visited 33 schools since being sworn in, including 16 traditional public schools, 7 charter schools and 9 private schools. Devos chaired the pro-charter schools group American Federation for Children and served on the board of the Foundation for Excellence in Education, which promoted school choice and common core. In addition to her school visits, Devos's first months on the job included several meetings with charter school advocates, local and state education groups and religious organizations, according to the schedules. Meetings with conservatives, business groups and financiers Devos, the former chair of an investment firm whose husband, Dick Devos, is the CEO of Amway, met with several business groups interested in learning about her new role. Devos attended meetings with the Greater Phoenix Economic Council, the South Carolina African American Chamber of Commerce and the Florida Chamber of Commerce. She also met with former House Majority Leader Eric Cantor. In his new role with the investment bank Moellis & Co., Cantor and other bankers met with Devos to talk about the Department of Education's existing portfolio on student loans. A note on the meeting said the investment group was there to discuss a private-slash-public partnership approach to fund student loans in the future. In addition to investment bankers in Washington, she also visited some big names in Silicon Valley, including Emerson Collective, Google, and Theo Capital. Not surprisingly, many visitors to Devo's office have been figures in the education reform movement or stakeholders in her school choice efforts. Some have represented charter schools, such as the National Alliance for Public Charter Schools, or religious groups, like the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops and the American Association of Christian Schools, whose members could see enrollment grow if more states adopt voucher programs. Meetings with celebrities in addition to meeting with Emerson Collective's Laureen Powell Jobs and having breakfast with Peter Thiel at his home, Devos met with some notable entertainers. In April, Devos joined musician Pitbull at his charter school in Miami. She also spent a half hour in her office with Caitlyn Jenner, although the topics discussed in their meeting were not disclosed. Jenner, who says she may run for office, wouldn't go into detail about the meeting, but speaking about the Trump administration's work on LGBTQ issues, told the Daily Beast, Devos is, actually on our side. She's extraordinarily good. Jenner has also voiced dissent over President Donald Trump's decision to rescind Obama-era protections which allowed transgender students to use the bathrooms of their choice at their schools. And, Hillbilly Elegy, author J.D. Vance got a lunch and learn call from Devos in July. Messaging advice Devos's schedule also reveals she has been consulting with messaging experts. Conservative messaging guru and pollster Frank Luntz brought Devo's ideas for communicating her policy priorities. Frank has a 60-slide deck of the words to use and the words to lose regarding parental choice, vouchers, charter schools, teacher pay, and all other issues in education reform, reads a note on the June 21st calendar entry. In her second week on the job, Devo's met with Diana Bannister, whose firm has worked with conservative clients such as Citizens United, Tea Party Patriots and the Susan B. Anthony List. Devos also spoke by phone in February with Kylie McEnany, who is now a spokeswoman for the Republican National Committee and was, at the time, a conservative commentator on News Total. The next day, Devos attended the Conservative Political Action Conference, 
where she gave a speech and fielded a series of softball questions on stage from McEnany. Devos and teachers' unions at war There's no love lost between Devos and the nation's largest teachers' unions. Lily Eskelson Garcia of the National Education Association labeled Devos the, the queen of for-profit privatization of public education. Randy Weingarten of the American Federation of Teachers branded her an existential threat to public education and bashed school vouchers as only slightly more polite cousins of segregation. Devos bludgeoned unions for defending the status quo and what she called an archaic system that by every account is failing too many kids. While both union presidents have lashed out at Devos, the documents show very different approaches behind the scenes. Eskelson Garcia has kept true to her pledge to not work with Devos, neither she nor representatives from NIA appear on Devos' schedule. Weingarten and Devos, however, have had an ongoing dialogue. They've talked at least three times by phone, in February, April, and May, and together visited a public school in Ohio. The first call came a week after Devos was sworn in. Devos's office did not comment for this report.